Peter Woodcock was born in Canada, May of 1939. His mother, whose name was Waita Woodcock, gave him up for adoption a month after his birth in Ontario, Canada. No information was provided on the father at all. Peter was sent to a foster home. He always seemed to be distant from other children and found it difficult to bond with anyone. This caused him to be shuffled from foster home to foster home over the years. When Peter became two years old, he had a serious speech problem. It was documented when Peter would attempt to talk, he would only make grunting noises that were unintelligible. <coughs> Peter had trust issues. He seemed to be terrified of people. Peter would scream and cry frantically at anyone who approached. At one of his foster homes, he had been physically assaulted by one of his foster parents. Peter had to be treated at the local hospital for neck injury due to that foster home parents beating. By age three, a stable foster home was found for Peter with Frank and Susan Mayer. At age five, he was bullied by the other neighborhood children. Frank and Susan cared for Peter well. Throughout the years, they were concerned about his emotional development and would take him to the local children's hospital regularly for checkups. Peter was sent to a private school in order to get away from all the local school bullies. At school, he still chose to remain isolated from all the other children. They're all going to laugh at you. The Children's Aid Society did a psychological examination on Peter. It was determined that he had anger issues, despised his peers, and acts out his emotions. He lacks in self-control and questions any authority. That's a mouthful. Peter seemed only able to partially connect with younger children and exerts his control over them. He also feels the need to not remain stationary due to his distrust of others near him. This caused Peter to run away from home frequently. And at age 16, Peter received a bicycle from his foster parent. He would travel all over the city with his imaginary bike friends in order to escape his actual life. Throughout the city of Toronto, several young children had had been sexually assaulted by an unknown male. Police had no leads and the children were too young to provide any substantial information. In September of 1956, a seven-year-old child by the name of Wayne Mallet was found murdered via strangulation. The child's clothing had been removed and body redressed. The murderer had left bite marks on the child's buttocks and also his calf. No evidence of rape was found, but the killer did defecate near the body. I think you already topped yourself with being a child killing monster. No dump was needed. Another 14 year old child by the name of Ron Moffat was arrested for this murder and made to confess to the police. Witnesses confirmed that he was in a different location at the time of death, but he was held by police custody anyway. In October of 1956, a nine year old boy by the name of Gary Morris was found beaten and strangled to death. His clothes were removed and the body was redressed. Bite marks were found on the boy's neck from the killer. No leads were found by the police, but the police did believe that the same killer committed this and the previous murders. You think? In January 1957, a four-year-old by the name of Carol Voice was found murdered. She had been sexually assaulted and her death was brought about by the killer ramming a tree branch into her vagina. A four-year-old. Hello parents, where are you? A witness observed the male pedaling his bicycle away from the crime scene. A composite sketch was drawn which matched Peter Woodcock. Peter was arrested and confessed to all three murders. Peter was used as a witness for Ron Moffat who was falsely arrested for the murder of Wayne Mallet. Peter was charged for only one murder and was found not guilty due to reason of insanity. Wonderful. A psychological evaluation was completed and he was diagnosed as a psychopath. Seriously? Are you sure? 34 years later, Peter had his name legally changed to David Kruger. While in the psychiatric ward, he was able to befriend another serial killer by the name of Bruce Hamill. Bruce was convinced by David that he needed to kill another release ex-inmate by the name of Dennis Kerr. Bruce was convinced to buy all the supplies to murder Dennis Kerr and meet him in the woods. David was given a three-day pass from the psychiatric hospital and he met up with Bruce Hamill. David called Dennis and the three of them met in an isolated place in the forest. I'm sorry, I don't think I'll be meeting up with anybody alone that I met in the psycho ward, let alone in the woods. David and Bruce took turns murdering Dennis. 
by beating him and stabbing him to death. They also sodomized his dead corpse. David turned himself into the police and died in the psychiatric hospital at the age of 71 of natural causes. This guy is just the gift that keeps on giving. Please hit the like button, subscribe, also notification button so you can be reminded of new content that I upload at least three times a week. God bless, stay safe.